Hello, this is Keith Cooks. I'm Keith, and today it looks like summer has arrived. So before it leaves again, I'm going to do something summery. I'm going to make a caramelised onion and cheese tart. So nice thin buttery pastry, rich, eggy, cheesy and oniony filling. <laughs> takes a bit of time mainly for caramelizing the onions but well worth it so if you enjoy this video press like watch it twice all the way through press all the adverts stuff like that why not so time is short let's get on with it caramelized onion and cheese tart right obviously you want a load of onions so well, I've got an assortment that much um, you know a couple of really big ones would be ideal there you go Sharpen knife. Peel onion. Chop it off or not? I think we do, because I have. It's early in the morning, it's 10 o'clock. I don't usually manage to get my shooting going this early, so I might be a bit incoherent till I've had more tea, but I do want to get this going pronto. All right, biggest magic knife ever. And you want to set your knife onto thin slices, not wafer thin, about 5 mil, about a quarter of an inch. So to cook the onions you want a big frying pan on medium heat and add a couple of tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of oil. And when the butter is melted it, it, it should cover the bottom of the pan, if not add a bit more butter or oil. The idea of the oil is to stop the fat from burning because oil has a higher smoke point than butter. When that's heated up, pop the onions in and keep stirring and stirring for the first few minutes. At this point you don't really want them to brown, you just want them to soften. It's important not to overcrowd the pan. You can't really tell at this point because the, you know, the huge amount of onion will reduce down and down and down. Once they've begun to soften, you can put a lid on if you want. Opinions vary on whether this is needed or not. Having a lid on encourages the onions to kind of steam and release their, their moisture. So give it a stir every few minutes. Don't go away because you could easily find that your caramelised onions are actually just a load of charred, carbonised, inedible vegetation. So that's beginning to brown, so I'm going to take the lid off, keep the lid off now, and move it onto the, the smallest ring that I've got on the lowest heat setting, and we'll just let that cook away for well another half hour did i mention this this will take a long time it takes 45 to 60 minutes really to do it properly okay i'm going to make the pastry so i need 250 grams of plain all-purpose flour 125 grams of cold butter which i need to chop into little cubes and a teaspoon of salt Add that to the flour, stir it in. Now I've got my butter. Rub them in with your fingertips. It's important not to melt the butter with the heat of your hand, but uh, sometimes can be tricky. You can do this in a food mixer if you can be bothered with all the washing up. Now we need to add a few tablespoons of cold water, just enough to make it come together into a ball. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, Okay, that'll do. So I'm going to cover that and stick it in the fridge to rest for 15 minutes. Now we've had, well, 45 minutes and it's looking like it's almost there. It's very tempting to turn the heat up at this point, but really don't. Just give it more time. And what we're looking for is, uh, you know, really deep golden brown and some sort of jammy looking liquid around it. 
So I'll stop cooking the caramelised onions now because I, I reckon they look um, pretty close to done. Now I need to make the pastry shell, so I'm going to blind bake that and I've got this flan tin with a removable bottom and that is 23 and a half centimetres, just nine and a quarter inches across. So we'll roll out the pastry quite thin. I've got some flour on the worktop and on the rolling pin and just squash it. You need to preheat your oven to 160 Celsius for a fan oven, convection oven. That's 180 for a conventional one, and that's gas four. I think I'm going to have some extra pastry. I might be able to make one or two little ones, little flans, little tarts. So, rolling pastry over the rolling pin, and then unroll it on your tin. And just grab a spare bit of dough. And use that to push it down so that your beautifully manicured fingernails don't break the pastry. Okay, I'm going to cut that excess off roughly. I'll cut it more precisely once it's had its first blind bake. Now I need to stamp the base all over with a fork, and that stops it puffing up. And then this, this is my baking rice. You could use baking beans, any kind of dried beans, any, anything that will basically hold down the pastry while it's being blind baked. So I, I always reuse this. Um, it's just some ordinary rice and some crumpled up greaseproof paper. So pop that in there. That stops rice getting into the pastry, which you don't really want. Make sure it goes right up to the edge, because that's where you're likely to get expansion going off. And then we pop that in the oven initially for 20 minutes. Okay, time's up for the first bit of the blind bake. So carefully remove the rice. Trim the edge of the pastry. <coughs> Now I've got a beaten egg, I'm just going to glaze the inside and the inner edge and the rim. And that could go back in the oven for another 10 minutes. Now to make the filling I've got four eggs, 250 grams of hard cheese, so that's cheddar and that's a bit of um, grana padano, and about 100 grams of soft cheese, a teaspoon of oregano, and some slices of mozzarella to top the tart and the caramelised onions, don't forget. So we need to grate all the cheese, smash the eggs in, add the oregano, add the soft cheese and the onion and mix them all together. And that's a bit thick so I'm going to add some milk. If I had any double cream, I would use that. But I haven't. Right, I've got my blind baked pastry case, and I'm going to fill it with filling. Actually, not completely fill it because I think it will expand a little bit. Also, I made two small tart cases, so I need to keep some filling for that. <laughs> and pop some balls on. That'd be good on a t-shirt, wouldn't it? Pop some muzz on. Maybe not. <laughs> right, so I'm going to slap that in the oven for, well, 30 minutes. It's the coolish setting that I had before, so shouldn't take too long to bake. And actually I'll give it a sprinkle of ground black pepper before we put it in. Okay. 25 minutes, we'll see. All right, I think I can honestly say that the, uh, the mozzarella on the top was a bad idea, visually. But I'm sure it'll be wonderful and stringy and fabulous when we put it open. Mm. 
And now. <coughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's taste test time, time. Oh, with Mrs. Keith Cooks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hi guys. Dinner. Don't know what happened to that bit. Oh, okay. You've been having Cooks nips. Oh, we're hungry. That was my bit. Oh, yeah. Oopsie daisy. Mmm, still warm. Mmm. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Did Juicy. you tell Did you tell them where you found this the recipe? I made it. Mm, I know. But... Ah, no, yeah, no, well, I didn't do that recipe. Oh, right. <laughs> Which from a, a cookbook for students, and the recipe was sun dried tomato, sausage, and potato, and potato tart. That's not what this is. No. What have you done? Oh, it's nice. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting cheese and onion, mm -hmm. and mm. I say that's it. That is it. Mm. It's caramelised onion mm. and three kinds of cheese. Oh, that's really nice. Mm. Oh, and I'll bet that's going to be fantastic cold as well. Right. Now you've got the moz off, yeah. <laughs> the what? Mozzarella. Oh, I see. Okay. That's one of these pale discs. Which was a mistake, but there you go. We live and learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, brilliant, eh? Yeah. I just thought something had sagged and I was going to tactfully not say anything. <laughs> nah, it was just. seemed like a good idea at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm pleased because this is my lunch break, so I know what I'm having. Haircut. Style. There will be a haircut. For the next one, I think. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and see, see you all next, next time. time. That was him checking that the camera's all plugged in. <laughs> I do these things when it's too late. <laughs> Drop. Bye. <laughs>